Good morning, everyone, and welcome to River City Plus, the show after the show, an opportunity for us to have even more local conversations with great local people. Today, I have Gwendolyn and Douglas Bryant with me today from A Touch of Clarity, and I'm so happy to have you here because March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and we're here to talk about educating people on how they can make sure that their families are healthy, to talk about maybe some of the taboo topics that you all have faced in your journey that you wish you would have known, and also to talk about your wonderful daughter. So guys, um, Douglas, do you mind kicking us off and just telling me what is Touch of Clarity? Well, um, A Touch of Clarity is a 501c3 corporation that my wife and I, we started um, about two years ago, but actually we started working with, what would you say, the um, building our, mini, building, building it up based on our daughter's diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Our daughter was diagnosed in 2018 with colorectal cancer. And once she was diagnosed, we began to advocate because she was really behind it. Mm -hmm. As far as like she did a few YouTube videos and when she did that, that began to make us look to say, you know what, we need to keep this going. Right. Because once she was diagnosed, they gave her a short time to live. But then again, we said, no, let's do everything we can to keep her alive, but her legacy lives on. Mm -hmm. So that helped us go into creating the um, A Touch of Clarity. And the one thing we have about A Touch of Clarity is that Oh, it's like a like a ripple, the ripple effect, because that's what we believe it is about. All it takes is one drop to create a ripple effect, mm -hmm. and that's what we're looking at making this work as a touch of clarity corporation. Now, Ms. Gwendolyn, can you talk to me about the part of your advocacy when it comes to education? Were there parts of your daughter's diagnosis or just events that you have when you were going through this process with her that you said, I, I wish someone would have told me, or I wish I would have known this in advance. What are the things that you're sharing with people now that you wish someone had shared with you and your family? Um, a lot of people think that it's a old man's disease or old person's disease, mm -hmm. but it's not. That's the taboo about it. We, it, it's not anymore. Um, Tiffany was only 32 when she was diagnosed, she passed away at age 34. And we found out now that more and more younger adults are getting this disease. By the time uh, 2030 gets in, more younger people between the ages of 29 to 49 will be diagnosed. And we, want, we just wanna let people know how important it is to get screened especially if you have a family history of it, mm -hmm. please get screened. Now, Tiffany's children, they will have to get screened 10 years prior to when she was diagnosed. Wow. She was diagnosed at 32. So her oldest son will have to be, uh, get screened at 22 years old. So it's very, very important Family history is very important too. A lot of times we go to our family reunions and we find out everything else. Right. But the medical history, and that's important. We didn't have it in our family. No one had colon cancer. Uh, no one has ever, you know, been diagnosed with it, but Tiffany was. So we just want people to know the importance. Please get screened. If you're having symptoms, don't just push them to the side. Because you may, you may think that you're having cramping in your stomach or mm -hmm. diarrhea or constipation or, oh, I can right. just take something for it and it'll be okay. Right. But that's not always the case. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love that, like you said, her legacy lives on in terms of advocacy through you, through her children. And that was something that really struck me when I received your first communication. I'm, I'm, you know, just turned 35. I was 34 literally when I got your email. And it was very, it was very impactful for me that this is something that she had experienced. I had to reread it a few times um, because I, I did kind of have that mindset. I was like, this is something that primarily affects males. Older, you know, because I, I know my dad's and my dad and his friends, they, they often advocate for each other to get screened. But again, in that, in that age group, but this is a young, a young woman yeah. with, with kids in her, in her thirties, in her prime. Yes. And, and this took her life. So yeah. in terms of getting screening, what does that look like? Is it annual colonoscopies that we need to start getting earlier? Are there other forms of screening that we should know about? There are annual mm -hmm. talk to your physician. Mm -hmm. 
We think it should be earlier than 45. They just moved the age. It was at 50 starting, mm -hmm. but now it's at 45. But we feel it should be earlier at 18 when you first go in to get your physical, you know, because people are getting it younger mm -hmm. and younger. And there are different types of um, testing that you can do. Mm -hmm. One, you know about the Cologuard. You can get the get mm -hmm. Cologuard uh, done. Um, what what is Cologuard? It was like just in case we, mm -hmm. you know, I I only know about it again because I was looking at some of the resources that you sent me. But you know, can you tell us what that is and like it's because it's a lot less invasive. Yeah, Cologuard. It doesn't detect um, your polyps, but it can tell you you do have mm -hmm. cancer. So that's just one. But the but the more one that you really need to do is that colonoscopy because mm -hmm. they it will detect the polyps and everything else and while they're you know doing that they can remove the polyps and and save a life yeah absolutely and it and it's something you know i i, I think anytime we're hearing the word colon people kind of shy away from it because it's 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 not the sexiest part of medicine but it is something that is so important and like you said the more you talk about it the more you educate people the more people feel comfortable having those conversations at family reunions because you know let's face it that's not usually something that's brought up over over a dinner table but it's it's life-saving yes. and so in terms of how you're also continuing her legacy. Mm -hmm. You have not only created a lot of literature, you've created a website with resources and things like that, but you also have a really beautiful event that you get to celebrate her with. Douglas, can you tell us about it? <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. The um, event that we have coming up on March 16th, the Black Tie Gala, and we're not revealing where it's located unless you purchase a ticket. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway. <laughs> it's a speakeasy um, <laughs> style. <laughs> but it is, uh, we're doing a black tie event, and the event will be located in the River Club, and it's on the 16th of March. And there are tickets that you can um, purchase, but the purchase of the ticket is actually a donation. Mm -hmm. Because what we're doing with all the funds, every cent that we receive will be packed back to the, you know, or repacked back to the community. What we mean by that is essentially we're having a few spots that we're helping out. Um, for one, we are going to give a portion of it to Boyle and Gruber for research, mm -hmm. as well as give a for, um, that portion to them. They're going to uh, purchase vouchers, like free vouchers. So if someone cannot afford to get a colonoscopy, they will be able to get a free voucher to get one done, mm -hmm. as well as um, we're going to be giving back to the community by going out, wanting to go to different places, whether a church or a community activity, mm -hmm. and talk about the awareness of it. And like Gwen said, like when we do family reunions, how wonderful it would be if with that family tree that you have on that family tree, what that uncle or aunt or mom or mm -hmm. dad or grandma or grandpa, mm -hmm. what did they pass away from? Mm -hmm. Then that way you'll know, oh, okay, they passed from that, so I'll right. know the history, right? Yeah. So passing on information like that to the community, mm -hmm. as well as we're looking at um, helping out what is known as the learning experience. Mm -hmm. That is a place where her children went, all three of her children. And um, it's a phenomenal um, child development center. So we wanna help them out as best we can. The teachers help them. And then um, what were some of the other things? Um, one of the other things that we're doing as well is uh, with Fight CRC, um, we're going to be giving research, fight, fight mm -hmm. colorectal cancer. We're going to give uh, money for research there. And also we have what we call a smile kit. Uh -huh. It's called She Made an Impact on Lives Everywhere. And what this is, is a comfort basket for people who are going through chemo. And to date, we've given away six, mm -hmm. and one went as far as New Jersey. Wow. Yeah, so that's the impact that God is blessing us to have on the lives of others, and that's what we wanna do. How does it make you feel knowing every basket that goes out, every dollar that goes out, you know, that that's her, that's a little piece of her? It, it, it actually is because Tiffany, because Tiffany was um, a very joyous, happy person, right? And the one phenomenal feat about Tiffany is that once she was diagnosed, Tiffany worked all the way up until two months before she passed. 
she had colon and but her demeanor her smile her laughter she loved to watch martin you know so that was like her thing to watch but she was a she was just so full of joy full of life and so to see all of these things take place to see dollars go out to bring smiles to people like gwen was saying about the smile kits to mm -hmm. see all these things happy make bring happiness to folks this is amazing you know for us mm -hmm. and we're excited you know you really can't tell right now but we're excited mm -hmm. about all of this mm -hmm. that's taking place no i i can sense your joy from here douglas i have to ask this thing this thing that you brought in that's hidden over here is that a picture of her <laughs> yes ma'am can we see it von von can you hand me that do you mind he, exactly. he brought he brought something in that was that was covered up and and i didn't get a chance to see it but if this is tiffany i want to make sure that everybody gets to see her too thank you This is our, this is our inspiration right here. This is our inspiration. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you about this picture. That's why we use it all the time. I went with her one day for her treatment. She's actually in treatment. If you can see all the, you know, she I said, didn't, I'm not going to lie because I was looking at how she, she, I thought she was in a makeup mirror. No, ma'am. <laughs> nope. I, she's um, at a bathroom at the yeah, hospital. She, she said, mom, how beautiful. I'll be right back. I'm going to the bathroom. So she came back. She said, look at this. I said, you're in there taking selfies. <laughs> like a queen. And that I was, love it. that was, that's her staple picture that yeah. we use all the time. Yeah. yeah. She was always so positive and everything about her journey. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so proud that both of you are doing exactly what you were doing. And I know that Tiffany is so proud of both of you. So thank you for sharing your story with me here on River City Plus. Guys, I'll make sure you are linked up. You will not want to miss this event at the River Club. It's a beautiful venue. It's going to be a great time with a lot of really great memories. Thank, thank you both. You. Thank, thank you. you.